Hey friends, good morning and welcome to our time of worship. Today the theme is that of forgiveness and how many times should we forgive? Our opening words come from Psalm 103, reminding us that the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. But the heavens are as high above the earth, so great is God's steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, the Lord has compassion on all those who fear him. Today, our first song is a very well-known hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. And now we continue our praise of God in our opening prayers, also followed by our prayers of confession. So let us pray. Amazing and almighty God, we give you thanks and praise. We adore you because you are the one who has made all things. You are the one who existed before time itself was known. You're the one before the Big Bang and the created order began its journey to become the world we are today and the world that this universe will be in the times to come. We praise you for your unending love for us and your mercy. Like a father or a mother who has compassion upon their children, so you have compassion upon all those, those who respect you. And we come before you knowing that you are one unending in love, mercy and grace. But yet forgive us for the times when we have sinned and we have got things wrong. And when we find it hard to forgive others. 
especially for the small things that perhaps really irk us. And yet we know you forgive us for the much larger things that we do. Help us to show love, mercy and compassion for all that Jesus loved, died for and rose again. May your love surround us this morning and always. Amen. Today we just have the one reading. It comes from St Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell on his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all the debts of yours before because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant, just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he could pay back all he owed. This is how my, fa my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Amen. Blazing light, your cross reveals the truth we dimly knew, how small the debts we are owed to us, how great is our debt to you. As we sing now our next hymn, forgive our sins as we forgive, you taught us, Lord, to pray. Thank you. 
So Peter asked a question, Lord, how many times shall I forgive a member of the church who sins against me as many as seven times? Say something slightly different. Look to the context of the story in line of the numbers round on countdown. Now, I remember as a teenager coming home from school at the advent of Channel 4. I guess I was about 13 at the time, wondering what this new channel would be like. And grew up just with three channels on the television. And, of course, that first programme was Countdown with Richard Whiteley and Carol Vorderman. And I hope I tend to do better in the numbers round than I did in the letters round. The context here is Peter's question. <clears throat> How many times should I give the one who sins against me? And Peter believes he's being very generous. In some senses for the Jewish law. And perhaps also the sense of a sort of a cultural thing that has passed on. And maybe summed up in the terms of baseball. If anyone's into the American sport of baseball. Reminds me rather much of rounders we used to play at school. The phrase there, three strikes and you're out. Which goes back, I guess, to the batsman. If you can't hit the ball on three occasions, then you lose your innings. And perhaps three times seems a reasonable amount. Once perhaps you have misunderstood it, the second time you make it clear, and the third time, well, they cross the line. So Peter thought he was being extremely generous, saying seven times. But Jesus says, no, it is seven. As we have here, hopefully you can see uh, the number seven. Uh, times 70. Now, I'm no Rachel Riley or Carol Vorderman. I'm able to work out that that indeed is number 490. Hopefully people can see that. Now, of course, some versions of Matthew's Gospel mention not just 7 times 70, but 77 times 7. A bit more complicated now, you see. So again, if it's 77 times 7, then one would say that must be another 49. I think my math is OK. So we'll add 49 on the bottom. Therefore, we've got... Oh, I think of how Carol must do this and uh, um, Rachel, you know, live on television, that they get the numbers correct, you see. I think Tony's holding his hands up for me. He's doing really well. So this may or may not be right. So let's check back. If you ever watch it another day, you know what they were. Our, our minister doesn't know his maths. But I believe we have here, uh, you can see it, 539. Oh, well done, Lord. You've got your calculator, you see. So I still, I still do maths in my head when I need it. So 539 sounds a good number of times, really. I guess the thing would be, when you start to think about it, when you get beyond 10 or 20, are we certain that I've forgiven that person 32 times or 33 times? Or, And maybe what Jesus really saying is, that the answer to our sum should be something like this. Going back to my maths at school, which is many, many years ago. I do believe being told there is one number that if you multiply the answer is always the same. And sometimes I've, I've did a skill assembly. She'll say, well, is it one multiplied by one? Well, not quite right, because one times one is one. But if you had 1,024 times one, the answer is 1,024. But there is one number. If you multiply by any number, the answer is always the same. So I've got to go with that number. Let's say Jesus talked about 77 times 7. We know that is 539. But this time, if I multiply it by a particular number, the number will be the same. There's only one number I can put in here that will give me exactly the same answer to whatever the top figure might be. And that number is a big zero. Ever we multiply by naught, the answer is always naught. I was told at school that naught in mathematics is an infinite number. And therefore, the number times zero 
has to be naught. So perhaps the answer to the mathematical question that Jesus was given to Peter, how many times should I forgive? The answer is the infinite number, infinite. In the world we live in today, it can be very hard to forgive. But of course, that is the meaning of the cross. And perhaps why the story comes toward the end of St. Matthew's Gospel. Jesus is approaching. Indeed, in just a few chapters time, he enters Jerusalem on that final journey, his triumphal entry. And here in this final section of teaching, Jesus reminds us the infinite mercy of God is to forgive, forgive, and to forgive again. How people respond to that message of forgiveness is hard to know. Maybe it has to be infinite. It will eventually all receive God's love and forgiveness. And our world is transformed to the place that it should be. And the context of infinity, then perhaps the small things that really irk us, those small things we want to uh, get even with somebody, don't really matter at all. And we find the full meaning of how often we should forgive our sister and our brother. So now, friends, we come before God in prayer. So let us pray. Faithful God, we need your forgiveness, consistently renewing our lives, freeing us to be a people of faith, hope and love, made whole by your grace. We pray for those struggling to forgive others, people who have had great wrongs done to them or to those they love. We can think recently of court cases that have made national headlines. Sometimes we have he heard of things we struggle to understand, how people can behave with evil and with badness. We pray for those who cannot forgive themselves, people who cannot live with the knowledge of what they have done or said. Lord, help them to know the infinite nature of your love. We pray for those in desperate need of forgiveness. People torn apart by guilt or regret. Their lives in need of rebuilding. Lord, help us to see the past does not have to have any hold over us. We pray for ourselves, learn to offer forgiveness by absorbing hurts and not returning them. Learning to offer to all the forgiveness made known in Christ upon the cross. We pray for ourselves, learning to accept forgiveness as we give our lives in faith, loving God to you. Learn to accept the forgiveness offered by others as we live in humble love with one another. Loving God, help us to forgive from our hearts. And we pray for a world very much torn and in need. A world where we have seen so many affected by severe flooding as well as by extreme heat. And for the people of Morocco, now thousands killed by this massive earthquake. For the G20 meeting this week, as the most wealthy nations and areas of our world seek a way of working together. Loving God, help us to forgive, that we may know the breadth and length and height and depth of your forgiving love, off to us in Jesus Christ. We bring together all our prayers as we say the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For nine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And the one who makes that uh, eternal forgiveness possible is our Lord Jesus, his name that we lift on high. Our final song this morning, Lord, I lift your name on high. close our service with the blessing and may the blessing of God the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit remain with us throughout this week and forevermore. Amen.